traditional super fun and all about artisan cheese and more to melt your peaceful heart and toast your peaceful life. Coming to you from the Appalachian Mountains of southwestern Virginia, this is the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hey, this is Scott Hall from Peaceful Heart Farm, and you are listening to the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hello, everybody. Melanie Hall here. Hope you are doing very, very well. The conversation today and every day revolves around the value of tradition, traditional homestead living, traditional raw milk products, and artisan cheese. Topics discussed here are designed to create new perspectives and possibilities for how you might add the taste of tradition to your life. The cicadas are out and about in southwestern Virginia. It happens once every 17 years. It's truly a phenomenal occurrence. I can't wait to get to that topic today. But first, welcome to all new listeners and welcome back to Veteran Homestead Loving Regulars. Thank you for stopping by the Farmcast for every episode. It wouldn't be a show without you. I appreciate you all so much. And I'm so excited to share with you what's going on at the Homestead Farm this week, including all about the cicadas. Uh, Life goes on at the Homestead right through the rain and more rain and more rain. We trek twice a day out into the pastures to bring up the cows for milking, rain or shine. It's getting pretty muddy out there. Thousand pound plus cows twice a day, five of them, yeah, they churn up some mud. The cows are not bothered by the cicadas. They continue to carefully navigate that mud and come up to the milking shed twice daily. And last Friday, they each got a second trip into the shed. We started the artificial insemination process. There is a uterine implant and a hormone shot to start. And this will make all of the cows cycle together. And the reason we want that is so we can breed them all at once and the calves will all be born within days of each other. It makes the calving season short, sweet, and predictable. And once they start cycling together, they will continue to cycle together. It's a lovely system. Once we get them going, then uh, we can we can uh, have better control over that Uh, birthing process. Now the next step is removing the implant and then another hormone shot. And there's a specific time window when the actual insemination occurs. I believe it's approximately 60 hours after the hormone, the second hormone shot. I could be wrong about that. I'm learning as we go. Scott is the one with the detailed perspective on this whole process. He would know exactly when that uh, implant comes out and exactly when the actual insemination is going to happen. So the process of placing the implants involved a physical exam of each cow, and it was a relief to find out that Buttercup is actually pregnant, though she is a long way to go before she delivers. The vet estimated she is about nine months along. Sorry, six months along. Cows take nine months to grow a healthy calf, just like humans. Uh, We look for her to give birth in August. That's quite late, but better late than never. The other four are getting ready for the next phase, and they didn't complain too much during the process. It was quick and painless, except for those shots. Cows don't like getting a shot any more than humans do. Now, the sheep and the lambs, let's talk about the sheep and the lambs. These guys are also oblivious to the song of the cicadas. Uh, The lambing is just about done. There is one more ewe that looks like she will deliver in the next couple of weeks, but it could be longer. And there's one that doesn't look pregnant at all. She babysits the lambs a lot. I think she'd like to have one. We shall see. The big news with the lambs is the giant set of twins that was born five days ago. This is a great mom and she didn't require any assistance, but I have to wonder how she managed it. Normally, our lambs are six to eight pounds at birth, sometimes less. We had one that was only five and a half pounds and it was a single. So sometimes it's more. We had one just shy of nine pounds. But these two from the same mom totaled over 25 pounds. Think of it. Normally, even if you had two lambs on the upper edge and they were eight pounds each, that's a total of 16 pounds of lamb. This three-year-old ewe 
carried a set of twins totaling over 25 pounds. The boy was 11 and a quarter pounds. The girl was a whopping 14 and a half pounds. The day they were born, they were larger than the lambs born two weeks previous, and lambs grow fast. The little five and a half pounder may have doubled in weight by now, but she is still way smaller than her newest half sister. All are healthy and thriving. It's a great thing to see. So far, so good. No lost lambs. I did just rescue that newest boy. He was on the other side of the creek, and because the rain swelled the creek, he was sort of stranded. Thankfully, he didn't run away. I caught him easily and returned him to mom, so all is well there. And fingers crossed that the last one delivers healthy lambs without issue. And I say lambs plural because I think she will also have twins, but you never know. Last year, she also had a large lamb, but it was a single. But I think that was her first year of lambing, and they all, pretty much always have a single in the first year. If they're going to have twins, it'll be the second and following years. So the goats, I don't know, I have no idea what the goats think of the cicadas, but I am pleased that they are more and more comfortable with me being near. The sheep are also getting more comfortable with human interaction. Oh, they still run away if you get too close, but the point is I'm able to get closer before they start to run away. And I'm happy to report they are staying in their assigned paddock and not sneaking off to wherever they want without regard to our fencing plan and rotational grazing plan. So that's good news. Now, of course, the donkeys, they ignore the sounds that the cicadas generated in the trees all around them. All they want is a little cuddle and a scratch. That's it. Once they get that, they are happy campers. And it's strange. They, they still have their winter coats hanging on. It will likely be July before they have a sleek coat. And it's pretty hot by then. Even with brushing their winter coats, hang on long after I think they should be gone. But what do I know? It's not up to me. The sheep will be, uh, have shed theirs and the cows will have shed theirs. But those donkeys just seem to go on forever before they, they shed all of their winter coat. Now the quail, the tree right next to the quail cages is full of cicadas. And poultry and fowl are pretty carnivorous. The quail, the quail would likely enjoy munching on them if they could get close enough. Uh, but that's not going to happen. The cicadas are too big to get through the mesh cages. The quail are left to hear them and not be able to eat them. The breeding groups are doing very well. There are 13 hens there, and we get anywhere from 8 to 11 or 12 eggs a day. Occasionally we'll get 13, but it's rare. Uh, 9 or 10 is most common. The young ones are doing really well. You would not believe how big they are now. They are barely three weeks old, right? Barely three weeks old. They went from being the size of my thumb, right? Look at your thumb, to larger than my whole hand in that short period of time. And they still have a little way to go to reach their full size. They'll probably get another quarter, third bigger than they are right now. Um, they're unbelievably fast growth rate will slow down a bit and they will become fully mature over the next five weeks so looking forward to that now scott our creamery guy is off the farm right now he had to go to town to pick up that special grout i talked about last time i think tomorrow he will be finishing up that smaller cheese cave how exciting is that I think that is what he has planned, but I could be wrong. He is also diligently working on that roof over the milking parlor and the open-air animal barn. Um, there's an attic area over the milking parlor. That is the part where we stand, the milking parlor. We stand when, when we're setting up the cows for milking, and they're up in the barn part. So that's about two and a half feet, I think, higher. Uh, this roof and ceiling is a couple of feet higher than the rest of the building because of that barn floor being higher. And over the past few days, Scott has been building a stairway from the attic over the rest of the building to the attic floor of the other roof. It looks really good to me. His talent with building is always amazing to me. I look at that stuff and I think, how does he do? 
do that? How does he figure all that stuff out? He's always calculating this and that and the other, and it always seems to work out. It seems so complex to me. I think it is complex. He is simply very talented with creating buildings. Now let me get to those cicadas. That's the main point I want to talk about today. There are pictures posted on our Facebook page. Go over there and check them out. There is at least one video where you can hear their mating calls there as well. So I don't know how many cicada broods there are. They are numbered uh, from 1 to 23, but there are numbers missing after 11. So brood 9 is emerging in north central North Carolina, southwestern Virginia, mostly through uh, all of that whole southwestern Virginia and just a little bit of uh, southern West Virginia. And it began in mid-May and will end in late June. They start emerging from the soil eight inches beneath the ground. Uh, and when and the ground has to reach 64 degrees. A nice warm rain will often trigger an emergence. We have plenty of that. <laughs> Continuing as I record this. This brood and other species like it referred to as magicicada, periodical, periodical cicadas emerge every 17 years. Other magicada periodicals emerge every 13 years. So there are seven of these magicada species, but there are hundreds of other cicada species that emerge every year or every couple of years. Now let me talk about the life cycle of the 17-year magicicada. Cicadas begin their life as an egg, which the female deposits in a groove she makes in a tree limb. The egg looks like a grain of rice. The groove provides shelter and exposes the tree fluids, which the young cicadas, once they hatch, feed on. And these grooves can actually kill small branches, so we hope we have no problem with our orchard trees. The brood is emerging all around it. It was an open field and they're actually coming out from up under the woods usually. But once once the cicada hatches from the egg, it begins to feed on the tree fluids. And at this point, it looks like, like a termite or a small, almost translucent white ant. And then once this young cicada is ready, it crawls from the groove and it falls to the ground where it will dig into the ground until it finds roots to feed on. So it's typically going to start with the smaller grass roots and work its way up to the roots of its host tree. And the, the cicada will stay underground approximately 17 years. They're active underground, they're tunneling and feeding, and they're not sleeping or hibernating as has been commonly thought. They just grow for 17 years. After the 17 years, the cicadas emerge from the ground as nymphs. And we're seeing this now. There are hundreds and hundreds of small, perfectly round holes about the diameter of my pinky finger all over the place. The emerging nymphs climb the nearest available tree and begin to shed their nymph exoskeleton. We can see lots of this going on now all over the trees. Nymphs varying stages of shedding the empty exoskeletons and once free of their old skin their wings inflate with fluid and their adult skin hardens they have red orange eyes and their wings are longer than their body it's an odd looking creature check out our website www.peacefulheartfarm.com peacefulheartfarm.com and the featured image for this podcast is a cicada once their new wings and body are ready, then they begin their adult life, and it is quite brief, only about a month, right? The adults spend their time in trees looking for a mate, and that is the song that we hear every morning until sometime after midday. It kind of crescendos and gets louder and louder, and then it fades off in the afternoon. The males sing, the females respond, mating happens and the cycle begins again. The eggs are laid and they're hatched. The young cicada falls to the ground, digs in for another 17 years. Now, sometimes people ask, why are 
there's so many all at once? And one answer is predator satiation. Uh, the first cicadas that emerge are eagerly consumed by predators, birds, raccoons, squirrels, dogs, cats, snakes, and so on. They eat until they are overwhelmed and they fill themselves to the point of exhaustion. And this gives the remaining cicadas a chance to escape. Now, in areas where there aren't enough of them to satiate the predators completely, that leads to dwindling populations and some eventually die out. Maybe that's why some of those numbers are missing in the number sequence. I look forward to the next few weeks as this phenomenon continues. Who knew we would be one to have part of this brood on our property? It doesn't happen everywhere. Uh, even though it's like southwestern Virginia, it doesn't happen absolutely everywhere. But you can tell it's happening here because you can see all those little holes. And you can hear them in the trees for like, acres and acres around uh, so it, it's just such a unique experience to have and we bought this property in 2003 uh, and they would have emerged in that year the last time but we bought it in September and they would have been long gone by then so it's first time for us on the on this property all right final thoughts that is it for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed the cicada information and the homestead updates. I look forward to next week when I hope to have some garden updates to share. If it ever stops raining long enough to get anything planted. Jeez. It's going to rain for three days. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hop over to Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and give me a five-star rating and review. It just takes a few minutes and it helps us out so much to get the word out to other people who are interested in this time, type of content. Also, please share it with any friends and family who might be interested in this type of content. That's the best way to get the word out there. Thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. And until next time, may God fill your life with grace and peace.